in this Q&A video, we're going to look at a problem with emergency lighting and how we can fix it using this compact emergency fitting called the Spazio Plus from Zempa. Emergency lighting is absolutely critical in maintaining the safety and well-being of people occupying a building, especially in an emergency situation. It's really important that we can get people out of a property that's been plunged into darkness, possibly due to a short-term power cut or in more extreme circumstances because of a fire. Because of this, we find really specific guidance on how much light to provide on escape routes, open areas and other situations in BS 5266, which is reproduced for us in the Electrician's Guide to Emergency Lighting, published by the IET. While neither of these documents are statutory, they will help you to comply with the Regulatory Reform Fire Safety Order of 2005, which is the law. So, for example, on escape routes, according to the IET guide, for escape routes up to two meters wide, the horizontal illuminances on the floor along the center line of an escape route shall be not less than one lux, and the central band consisting of not less than half of the width of the route shall be illuminated to a minimum of 50% of that value. So at least one lux along the center line of the escape route. Then if you halve the width of the escape route and imagine a band that wide laid across the center of the escape route, the illumination level mustn't fall below 0.5 lux on that area. So far, so simple. So what's the challenge? Well, it's all to do with efficient design and installation. Most emergency lights, in fact most light fittings full stop, tend to give off their light in a circular pattern when looked at from above. But we very rarely, if ever, are called on to light circular spaces. We're generally lighting rectangular spaces in shape. And circles are not massively efficient at filling rectangular spaces. This becomes increasingly obvious when we start installing them into corridors. Although some of the light gets bounced off the walls, much of it ends up in the wrong places and can create average uniformity levels. This problem isn't so noticeable when it comes to large open areas that require anti-panic lighting, but in a corridor, which is generally a long, thin rectangle, it can lead to installing more fittings than are necessary. So what's the solution? Well, you may have noticed in a couple of short videos that we've made recently that these emergency fittings from Zempa have two different inserts containing two different lenses. These take the light from the same LED inside the fitting and spread it out differently. This one gives off the typical circular light pattern that's perfect for open area emergency lighting. However, this one gives a spread of light that is longer and thinner. This means that when being used in a corridor, it's not sending light out sideways and wasting it bouncing off the walls to places that it isn't needed. Obviously, that's a really clever thing to do, but what's the practical advantage for the installer and customer? Well, the main thing is that it may allow you to reduce the number of fittings that you've got installed to a space. As an example, I've done a quick lighting design on Dialux. It's a long corridor, two meters wide, acting as an escape route. In this version, I've inserted enough of the fittings to illuminate the escape route. You can see the bright patches on the walls from the circular spread of light that we'd get if we use the anti-panic open area lens. Looking at the results of the calculation, you can see that down the central line of the escape route, the lowest value is 1.45 lux, so above the one lux minimum, and the lowest value along the one meter wide central band of the corridor is 1.41 lux. We haven't mentioned the uniformity value so far, but suffice to say at this point that they're well within the acceptable limits. So that's fine, but is there a better, more efficient way to achieve an acceptable result? Well, let's have a look at what happens if we use the escape route lens in the fitting instead. Now, this is the exact same fitting in the exact same corridor as before. All we've done is swap out the lens on the front for a different one. You can see this in the spread of light coming off the individual fitting. It's long and thin instead of circular in its shape. So let's see what happens when we cut the number of fittings with the different lens down to just two. You can see from the results of the calculation that the lowest illumination along that center line is now 2.46 lux and the minimum value in the central one meter band is now 1.78 lux and the uniformity values are also much improved. So we've actually reduced the number of fittings and improved the emergency lighting result at the same time, all just by swapping over the fronts on this fitting. Incredible stuff. Now, you may be thinking, well, so what? All we've done is reduce the number of fittings by one. That's not exactly going to make a dent in the cost of a job. Well, don't forget that it's not just the cost of the materials you're reducing. It's also the time and labor involved in the installation. Also, you may be working on even longer corridors, and if it's in a large commercial building, there may be several of these long corridors on every floor, multiplied across the several floors of the building. When you look at it in those terms, the savings really do start to stack up just by using the right kit in the right places. So there we go, that's how to make our emergency lighting installations much more efficient and reduce installation costs. 
For more information on innovative Zempa lighting products, click the link in the description. All that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.